There's always something that reminds you of how heavily fractured Nigeria is along ethnic and religious lines, even though we have existed more or less as a country for more than 100 years. In 2014, the Good Luck Jonathan administration celebrated 100 years of our amalgamation. A centenary award was organized to that effect. The central bank also issued a special 100 naira banknotes to commemorate the milestone. But one could argue that that celebration was an exercise in futility. It was a sentimental celebration to make us feel good about a country whose people have never lived in unity. At best, they have only learned to tolerate themselves. Before I continue, if you are listening to these on YouTube or Facebook, please subscribe to my channel. If you are listening to these as a podcast, kindly follow me and leave a good review. I make essay content on my job politics and culture. Feel free to check out my catalog and see what I'm about. Also, check out my magazine. Visit www.disaffected.ng to read great articles on politics and culture. Thanks for rocking with me. Now back to the video. It takes very little for our dividedness to show. The latest example of this is the emergence of Bola Ahmed Tinubu as the president-elect. His win has somehow led to ethnic tensions on social media. There is a kind of Yoruba Igbo code war going on. Twitter threads have been written and videos of ethnically charged incendiary comments targeted at either side have gone viral. To be fair, a lot of these comments have come from some Yoruba people towards Igbo people. But let me back up a little. This ethnic code war did not start with the announcement of Tinubu as president-elect. It started last year when both the APC and PDP failed to zone their presidential tickets to the southeast. Atiku Abubaka, a Fulani man from the north, would end up clinching the PDP ticket. If he won the election, he would be taken over from Buhari, a fellow Fulani man from the north. And that would be a negation of the informal turn-by-turn rotational arrangement between the north and south. With recent growing calls for Igbo presidency, it seemed that both Atiku and the PDP did not have the interest of the Southeast at heart. Meanwhile, Peter B, who had contested as Atiku's vice in 2019, would leave the PDP days before the PDP primaries. He switched to the Labour Party. However, the obscurity of the Labour Party did cast doubt on how well Peter Obi would perform at the polls. People hoped that the APC would correct the wrong of the PDP and zone their tickets to the southeast. Unfortunately, Bola Tinubu, Mr. Emiloka, won the APC ticket. The APC and PDP did not care about the plight of the southeast, it seemed. Might I add that neither Tinubu nor Atiku chose an Igbo running mate. That also fueled suspicions that both parties did not care about the southeast. Pitobi became the only hope of actualizing an Igbo presidency. But despite the obscurity of the Labour Party, its popularity grew as the elections drew closer. During the coalition of the presidential results, southwestern states like Ekiti and Undo overwhelmingly voted against the Labour Party. Everyone had thought that Obi would perform way better in the southwest. Of course, he won Lagos State. But to his supporters, Obi's performance in the Southwest was not congruent with the acclaimed, ecumenical, and detribalized spirit of the Yoruba people. Ondo and Ekiti State sparked the Cold War. Let me add that certain events that took place during the election also contributed to this Cold War. Remember the videos of thugs harassing Igbo voters and Labour Party supporters in some polling units in Lagos? The harassment did not even start them. It goes way back. Remember how Igbo people repeatedly complained that thugs were sent to harass them during their voter registration in some places in Lagos last year? If you account for all these events, it is easy to empathize with why some Igbo people may feel the Yorubas are against them. As I script this, the ethnic cold war is still raging. The upcoming gubernatorial election has accentuated ethnically charged rhetoric on social media, especially as it pertains to Lagos. People have questioned the ancestry of the Labour Party candidate, Badibo Rhodes Vivo. 
Some have said he is not Yoruba and the Goshen enough because his mother is evil. People have gone on to spin conspiracy theories on how voting for, for him would mean selling out Lagos to evil people. <sighs> the truth, again, is we are not a united people. For millions of Nigerians, their loyalty is to their ethnic nationality. Nigeria itself is an amorphous concept for a lot of us. Nigeria means nothing to most Nigerians. In the words of Chief Obafemi Aolawo, Nigeria is a mere geographical expression. No one could have described Nigeria in a better way. And sadly, he said that in 1947, a whopping 76 years ago. Yet, nothing has changed. Though I describe myself as a disaffected Nigerian, the truth is my disaffection stems from how we constantly undermine ourselves. We have so much to achieve if only we divest our minds from all this primordial sentiment. And let me be clear, every tribe is guilty of this. The Igbo man or the Yoruba woman is not your enemy, neither is the Hausa man. Who cares whether that body boy is half Igbo? Buhari is another Muslim, yet under his watch, more Muslims and northerners died due to insecurity. When are we going to understand that our common enemy is the political class? That has continuously used ethnicity and religion to divide us as i leave you to ponder on that remember to follow and subscribe wherever you're listening check out my magazine at disaffected.ng check out the description below for links to my socials if you want to keep the conversation going and i'll see you guys in the next one